Uh, I'm the SMAC maintainer, among other things that, I've, that I'm doing here. Um, I've been working on uh, secure systems since the 1980s, so um, I have a bit of experience with this, and that's why SMAC came about. Uh, a SMAC is a third-generation multi-level secure system. Uh, the first generation of multi-level secure systems used strict Bell and LaPodula security model, which is to say you had a level and a set of categories that you used to make your access control decisions. So you could be uh, have a secret level on your, your data um, or on your process and then a set of categories which you might be, be cleared for. And that was great. It worked really well. But everybody we tried to sell it to said, uh, gee, that's not, I'm not, I'm not in the US DOD. That's not what I want to do. That doesn't work for me. Uh, even if you actually then went out and demonstrated that you could actually do exactly what they wanted to with it, people would say, but, but you don't understand. I'm not the US DOD. That's not what I want to do. Well, but, but you're just using it this way a little bit. You're not even using it differently. You're using exactly what this, what this, what this does. They would still say, yeah, but I'm not the US DOD. That's not what I, you know, this doesn't meet my requirements. So um, we fiddled around with it for the second generation and said, fine, what we wanted, what we're going to do then is we're going to provide some aliasing capabilities. You can give, give a name to something. And we're going to give you uh, by integrity as well. Uh, so you can do integrity checks in addition to your sensitivity checks. And people said, yeah, that's really great, but you know what? Um, it doesn't do what I want to do. I'm not the US DOD. So we scratched our heads and said, well, okay, well, what, what's the problem with it? Well, I have to specify all this stuff, you know, like my levels and categories. And I don't use levels and categories. I just want to, people to like, like this to be isolated from people like that. Oh, okay. So we put in an alias mechanism. And that worked really well. Uh, as people were using just aliases, they kind of forgot that they had Bell and LaPodula underneath. And so the third generation was, well, why am I bothering with these levels and categories and by integrity grades and divisions when I could just say, here's the, here's the name. Here's the, the name of your security bit here. Um, and then do the comparisons based on that. Uh, and that's what, I, that, that's what SMAC does. Uh, and it doesn't do other things. It doesn't do discretionary access control. Uh, we've got, capa we've got you know, mode bits and, heaven forbid, access control lists if you really want to do that. It doesn't do privilege. We have a capabilities mechanism that works just fine unless you consider sysadmin. Uh, so SMAC doesn't do that. It does mandatory access control. And that's all it does. Uh, so SMAC is a, is a mechanism that, that uses labels on subjects, labels on objects to determine what kind of access you have for something. Uh, basically, uh, when you create an object, it gets the same label that the, the process that creates it has. Pretty simple there. Uh, if you're doing IPC, uh, that's treated as a write operation. So if process A is going to write to process B, it needs, process A needs to have write access. Or, or <clears throat> process A's SMAC label has to have write access to processes, process B's SMAC label. Uh, yeah, um, that's, I guess, straight out of uh, Bell and LaPodula there, where it's a write operation. It has to be some kind of operation. Let's make it a write operation. Uh, we have a couple of, of other um, process attributes or process file attributes that we can use um, to, 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 to uh, clear up some of the, uh, the more obvious problems. Uh, for example, we have an exec attribute that you can put on a process, uh, on a program file, so that the process will run with that SMAC label instead of the SMAC label, the, the process that invoked it. Um, also, we have a, a spiffy transmute um, attribute you can put on a directory so that files that are created in that directory will get the get the label of the directory rather than that of the the process under certain circumstances. And I'm simplifying things just a little bit here because I I know that I'm just before lunch. 
Um, but those are the basic things. You know, basically, um, every process has a label. Every, every object has a label. Um, they're used in comparison uh, to do your checks. So SMAC implements a simple separation policy, uh, which simply says that we're going to com compare the label compare the labels and um, under the right circumstances we're either going to deny or, or grant access. Uh, so the basic rule is that if the labels don't match, you don't get access. Pretty simple there. Makes, you know, you know, makes isolation real easy. Well, you know, isolation is easy. Sharing is hard. Uh, all the problems that, that we have in, in uh, advanced security systems come from the fact that people want to share things. Um, other than the things that they're directly related to. Uh, so we have, in addition to the basic labels, um, we have some special labels that I'll talk about a little bit more in, in a minute here that allow you to, to address things like dev null, where everybody should be able to write to dev null. Everybody should be able to read from dev null. And um, explicit relationships can be defined. So if I decide that, the, that I want a process with the label snap to be able to access things that are labeled pop, we can create a, create a smack rule that allows that. And you can allow that uh, read access, read write access, append access, um, depending on how you want your policy to work. You can give it execute access uh, as well. So the whole idea here is that You've got two labels, you're going to do a comparison. If they're equal, great. Uh, if they're not equal, you're going to find a rule that, that identifies the two labels and provides you the access. And it turns out that by doing it this way, we don't have to compile a policy. There is exactly one rule that, will, that des describes the access between those, those two labels. And that simplifies things, things greatly. If, if you want to, to know, for example, when I'm looking at a subject, when I'm looking at an object, will it have access? There's one rule will tell you that. You don't have to decompile your policy. You don't have to determine what, what the phase of the moon is. Um, you don't have to know what namespace you're in. You, you look and you can see the rule. And it's, it's just there. Um, I mentioned special labels. We've got a couple of special labels here. And by the way, uh, <coughs> I didn't say what a label was. A label is a text string up to 24 characters long. Um, and they're not interpreted in any way. They're merely compared. All right, so um, the special labels we have, the floor label. Uh, this is the label that you put your system data at. Uh, the root of your file systems. Um, and it's the label that a file, that processes get started at and uh, that, that the init process is given unless you tell it otherwise. Uh, it has a special property in that all processes, any label can read, has read access to the floor label. So that's, that's how you solve the problem of how do I, how do I get at my libraries when I'm not running um, at the, yeah, at the same label as the system is, right? You have the star label. This is really good for like, dev null because everybody needs, needs to have access to that. Um, and then we have the hat label. Um, the hat label is used for things like backup. Hat label has the interesting property that if your process has the hat label, it can read anything on the system. It doesn't give it write access, but it does give it read access. Um, and as far as the networking goes, uh, SMAC enforces networking by network access control by default. So uh, uses SIP, uses the SIPSO mechanism in order to pass in, in IPv4 um, to pass the label with the packet. So if I'm trying to send a for a UDP datagram from from one process to another. Um, the packet gets the label from the sending process. It goes over to the other side. Um, the kernel pulls out, pulls it out of the, the, pulls the label out of the packet and says, 
would a, pro would a subject with this label be able to write to this process? If it can, it gets delivered. If it can't, it gets dropped. Uh, so that's enforced um, throughout, the net throughout the networking there. Uh, unlabeled packets are, take are uh, taken care of by what we call the ambient label. Uh, so a, if an unlabeled packet comes in, it's gonna be delivered to a process, it gets assigned the ambient label, and if a subject with the ambient label can write to that process, then it goes through, otherwise it gets dropped. Uh, ambient label is specifiable, so you can, set, you can specify it so that it's any value you want it to be, if you're privileged, of course. Um, and we also have a mechanism whereby you can say, any packet that comes from this host will be given this label, and you can only write, send information to that host if you have that label or if you have right access to that label. So that takes care of almost all the situations you have where you're talking to, you're talking out to the world on the internet. Um, who's using Smack? Uh, it actually does have users. Uh, Tizen, if you have a, a Samsung television or a Samsung camera, or just about any device Samsung has made over the past few years, it will have Smack in it. Um, Automotive Raid Linux uh, is using Smack, so if you have a, a new Toyota, it's got Smack in it. And uh, the Yocto project, uh, mechanism for, for building, um, building Linux systems, uh, I've heard it referred to as a Linuxotron, uh, actually has good support for, for SMAC and SMAC, uh, SMAC policies in uh, that build system. So, uh, what's new in SMAC these days? Uh, SMAC has actually been relatively stable over the past few years. Uh, what, what is new, we've got uh, support for overlay FS, which was missing for a good long time. Um, and you now have the privilege, if you have privilege, you can change keys. Uh, key value used to be you couldn't change a key if your label didn't match that of the key, even if you had had the uh, cap Mac admin privilege. Uh, that was actually a bit, a bit of a problem in, in a couple of cases, um, but we got a fi fix in for that. Uh, there are a couple of other things coming in uh, as well. So. Yeah, fi what's fixed recently? Uh, we had some memory leaks. Um, they were actually fairly obscure, um, but um, got some fixes in for those recently. Uh, IPv4 over IPv6 had some issues as well. Um, those have been fixed. Uh, UDP light and DCCP, uh, those changes came in. Generally, what we tend to find is that uh, most of the, the problems that show up in SMAC come in when somebody fixes something else. Uh, we've had a number of cases where the inode initialization for sockets has been optimized to the, to the point where they weren't putting enough information in early enough um, and that interfered with TCP. Uh, sockets getting getting created, uh, but those tend to get fixed in a relatively uh, reasonable fashion. Um, so, what do we have coming up, coming down the pike? Um, we have some networking projects involved. Uh, the first one, uh, we'd really, yeah, we don't support Calypso yet. We'd really love to have somebody work on that. Uh, anybody. Uh, has, has a keen, keen interest in becoming a network security developer, uh, this would be a, a great place for, for somebody to start. Um, we also have some cleanup that needs to be done in the current net label implementation uh, for SMAC. Uh, a combination of uh, a few, a few poor design choices early on and the fact that the NetLabel code has, has uh, advanced at a higher rate than I've been able to keep up with 
uh, means that there, there's some significant cleanup work to be done there. Um, that may be higher on my list now than it was was a year ago. Uh, we'll see about that. But that would be a, another area where if somebody wanted to contribute, that'd be be really welcome. Uh, you have a bunch of other projects as well. Uh, as namespaces have become more and more interesting in the community, um, SC Linux is working on namespaces. We just heard about AppArmor's work, work with namespaces. We actually had some work done with Smack namespaces a couple of years ago uh, in, at Samsung's kernel development group in, in Warsaw. Unfortunately, their use case disappeared. Um, so, yeah, that, that has been abandoned. It would be really nice to, to pick that back up. Uh, would love to support InfiniBand. Um, my home laboratory doesn't actually have an InfiniBand network. Um, that's the kind of hardware that's kind of obscure to get. But if somebody wanted to work on that, that would be really, really a, a positive thing. Well, LibVirt, um, eBPF, um, and we have a test suite under development that hasn't actually gotten, gotten corporate clearance to get out yet. Um, once we can get that out, and out into the community, then we can uh, get some more work on that. That would be a very positive thing because people frequently say, how do I make sure that my system is working right? Well, the test suite would be the right thing. Uh, just have to get it out to you. Um, and probably the heck. Oh, fiddle dee. I have a new clicker, and uh, it's it's really a f great clicker, but um, I haven't learned how to use it yet. Okay, so the biggest thing that that would would make uh, make my life uh, easier and probably make the, uh, the acceptance of SMAC go, go more swimmingly uh, would be a rule set for distributions. So if we had a, a good rule set for, say, Fedora or Ubuntu, um, we could probably get a lot more, more adoption. Um, this is not a small project. Um, I have considered the, the said script, which takes the SE Linux attributes on on files and translates them into smack labels, which is pretty easy. And uh, then do the same for processes, but then that would require reading the SE Linux policy um, and decomposing it somehow. Uh, but if somebody wanted to do that, that would be great and that would be cool and you could probably get a master's degree for that. Um, same for app armor policy, although uh, that might be a little bit easier to deal with. Or it might be a little bit harder. I'm really not sure. I'm of, of two minds on that. Uh, so that's about all I've got. Um, I know that it's almost lunchtime here, so uh, any questions? Questions? Thank you uh, for this presentation. Uh, I'm Andre from uh, London. I'm working on security uh, Specialist, I have one question. Do you have a complaint mode on, like a, like a complaint mode on APPR mode? Do you have this on Smack? Do like, I have a um, one way to uh, test? Oh, to you run mean a permissive program? mode? Yes. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. And that's in, and that's on purpose. Uh, there are debug. There are some debug facilities. Um, you can. Tell the system to report any time that an access is granted by a non-default rule. You can also specify that a, a single label that is going to be allowed to do anything it wants. Um, but those are strictly for debugging purposes. The problem with permissive mode, and I have seen this time and time and time and time again, is that the, the, when you give somebody permissive mode, what they do is as the system is in development, they turn on permissive mode, 
They do all the development, and then three days before release, they say, okay, now we're going to switch on security, and everything falls flat on its face. And everybody throws up their hands and says, what's wrong? And they say, well, my, my code works just fine, but security broke it. And then there's a big meeting, and all the executives come together, and they say, well, what shall we do? And they say, well, we can ship with, secu with security and with it in permissive mode. Oh, and then everything works? Yes. Oh, but we've got security enabled, right? Yes, it's enabled in permissive mode. OK, we are good. Um, and I know that people don't want to do that. And I know that people have plans to not have that happen next time. But guess what? Next time rolls around. and. Four days before the release, they turn security on. Everything falls on its face because nobody's been given time to go actually fix it. And so it ships with permissive mode again. So I know, I know that every, every major user of Smack has a patch on their own to, enable, to, to create permissive mode. It's not hard. It's about three lines of code. Um, but I'm not going to carry it because I know that uh, I, I know that when people use that, it causes problems. And it always has and it always will. And it's just inherent in, in, the, in the notion of having a permissive mode. It's just the way things work. Has been, always has been, always will be. Thank you. Any other questions? People are waiting for lunch. Let's yeah. thank Thank Casey. you, everybody.